Hey, I'm Mark. Welcome to my workbench. Today, we're not going to build anything and we're not going to design anything. I want to try a little bit of an experiment. And what I want to do is take these parts here, which I've printed on my resin 3D printer in transparent black resin. And I want to see if I can make them look more transparent than they do. I don't know if you've done any printing with transparent resin, but if you have, you've probably noticed the same thing that I have which is that when these things first come off the printer, they look really nicely transparent. Like if I put my hand here behind this, you'd be able to see right through and see my fingers behind there. The issue is that when they first come off the printer, they have this very thin layer of still liquid resin sitting on the top of the surfaces here. And that helps to fill in any of the little imperfections and layer lines and things like that in the surface and makes the surface look more transparent than it is. Problem is once you clean that off with isopropyl alcohol and then you cure these parts, then that nice layer that's uh, you know making it perfectly smooth is gone away. And so they get this cloudy kind of look to them. Now this one here uh, is just straight off the printer and cleaned and cured. This one I've actually done a little bit of sanding on as well. Um, and you can tell, at least I can, I guess the camera kind of picks it up. Um, this one gets a more uniform kind of cloudy look, but it still isn't transparent. Um, and then this one, you can see a lot more of the little imperfections and layer lines and stuff like that in it because, you know, it hasn't been smoothed out by the sanding. The thing you can do with sanding, though, is if you take this to the extreme, if you go uh, finer and finer grits of, of sandpaper and you really polish this thing out, and I've done this with some of these, you can make it look very transparent. You've got to get both sides. And in this case, because this part has lots of flat surfaces, it's not too hard to do to get it you know, sanded and, and really looking nice. The problem that I have with that is that these are actually things that I sell on my Etsy shop and I can't spend quite that much time on each individual one post-processing it or I would just have to charge so much uh, you know, because of the extra time and work that it takes that it wouldn't be worth you know, people's money to buy these things. So what I'm looking for is a quicker solution where I can batch process these things and make them look nice and transparent um, hopefully without a lot of extra, you know, time and work on each individual part. So one thing that you can do, um, if you wash these things or dip them in water, I've got a bucket of water here. Um, as soon as this thing gets wet, and I'll try to let it drip dry a little bit here, um, you can see that the transparency starts to come back right away. So the lights are kind of reflecting off of the liquid here on the surface so that doesn't help us here on camera um, but you know just a thin layer of liquid here does help the transparency of course once this dries or if i take a paper towel and dry it off then we're back to the same look again so the thought that i have is is it possible for us to create that sort of very thin layer of liquid uh, on the surfaces here and make it permanent and will that help these things to look more transparent and more uniform on the surface and so what I've done is I went to my local home improvement store and I picked this up. It's a can of gloss clear lacquer. Uh, it's meant for brushing on and so it should self level nicely um, and you know fill in any imperfections here. It should also, I'm hoping, be thin enough to just use straight from the can uh, without any additional thinning. So we'll see once we get this open whether that's the case or not. My plan is to just take these things and dip them straight in to uh, the lacquer without any thinning or anything, just straight out of the can, and then let them drip dry and see if that will help to seal this in and you know make the surface look more transparent. So with that introduction out of the way and without wasting any more of your time, what I'm gonna do is go set this area up because it'll probably make a big mess with the lacquer. I'll get the can open, uh, check out how thin it is, and then I'll be back in just a minute and we will dip these things in and then we'll let them dry and see what happens and whether we can make them look nice and transparent. So, I will be right back. Okay, we're back, we're ready to go. I've put on some gloves to protect my hands. I have opened the lacquer and if you want to try this uh, at home, make sure that you do this in a well-ventilated place because this, you know, definitely has that lacquer smell. Uh, my studio here has good ventilation and I'm going to turn that on as soon as I'm done recording the video. It makes too much background noise to do here for the video. So either wear a breathing mask or, uh, you know, be in a well-ventilated place for this lacquer. What I would like to do, as I said, is dip these in here and then let them stand here on this piece of wax paper that I've uh, 
put down to let them sort of drip dry. Um, and I did leave the printing supports on these things on purpose because I, I figured that would make it easier for me to grab them, to dip them in the lacquer. Uh, and then I'll remove the supports after we're done. Hopefully that won't leave too much of a visible edge here along the bottom. We'll see. However, these things don't stand up. They're a little bit top heavy. So what I'm gonna do is I figured out I can grab uh, the support here with one of these skewers and then this will provide it the uh, support that it needs to be able to stand up. So we're going to do that with both of these and then we'll go ahead and dip these. I have marked the one that was already pre-sanded with a little X here on the on the bottom of the supports so that we'll be able to tell them apart once we get uh, finished just in case they don't look that much different from one another. So we will start with this non-sanded one and all I'm going to do here, I do think that this uh, lacquer is thin enough to uh, be able to just dip it straight without doing any additional thinning. So we're going to just grab this thing and luckily it fits perfectly in the canister here. And it's very full so as I dip here I want to make sure I don't cause it to overflow. Alright, so that seems good. We've covered the whole thing. Let's make sure that we get that. There's a little air bubble that formed underneath right there. All right, there we got it. So now we will pull this out very slowly. I'll let it drip just for a second. And then we will turn it and just place it right here. Now the transparency looks good and I realize as I did that that I completely covered with my arm the can of lacquer. So let's try that again from a different angle. See if we can give you guys a better view of what's going on here. So just dipping straight in like this. The angle of the case causes a little bit of an air bubble to form underneath this one edge right here so that's what I've been working to try to avoid there we go we got it and now we can this out let it drip it does make quite a mess um, so I'm glad I grabbed this wax paper and have it here on the surface um, because once the lacquer dries on there it should just peel right off so there you can you can already see that it looks more transparent however we need to wait and let it dry and cure and see if that will continue to look good or not. So with that, um, I'm going to go turn on the ventilation in here because it does it is starting to smell kind of bad. And uh, I'm going to let these things sit for it said on the can uh, that they would it would be dry to the touch in a couple of hours. Um, and then it took it takes 24 hours total for it to be fully cured. So I'm going to come back in a couple of hours and take a look at these things and see how they're doing. And I'll record a little video so you guys can see what the progress looks like. And then we'll decide whether we need to wait for the entire 24 hours or not uh, for the final you know, cure to see how it turns out. So I will let these things sit and dry. I will be back to show you the results momentarily. All right, it's been about three hours um, since we dipped these things and left them to dry. And they are definitely dry to the touch now. Uh, I've taken them off of the skewers that were holding them vertical. So we can take a look at them here. And the first thing that I notice is they're definitely more transparent. So here's my hand you know, behind this one. And we could just barely see through the cloudy transparency from before. Um, so that's an improvement. They're also really shiny. So they're catching a lot of my studio lights here. Um, so hopefully that's not too much of a distraction or, help, or preventing you from seeing how these turned out. But the other thing that I notice right away as well is that they're showing a lot more of the imperfections that are inside of the resin print. So for example, on this particular one, up here near the top, across right in here, there was a printing issue and there are some layer lines that are very visible to me and I'll move it around in the light so maybe you can see it as well. Um, that are down inside of the resin. And so now that this surface is more transparent, we're seeing those imperfections more clearly for sure. So that's the downside or the, the main downside that I've noticed so far. And we see it even more. This was the one that was pre-sanded before dipping. This is the one that was not sanded at all. It was not, there was not any processing done other than just uh, 
rinsing it off in isopropyl alcohol and then curing it when it first came off the printer. And this one has a lot more of these surface imperfections and layer lines and things that you can see. So even though it is definitely more transparent than it was, it doesn't look nice. Uh, there's lots of little things that you know, if I were looking at this, uh, I would prefer actually the, the cloudy transparent look that we had previously compared to what we're seeing here. So end result, I guess, of this experiment is that it does work. Dipping in the, the gloss lacquer definitely makes the transparent resin look more transparent. It produces this nice, very smooth finish on the outside of the surface. Um, it's also very glossy, um, as to be expected, right? Because it was gloss lacquer. And um, so that's nice, but depending on your print and the quality of you know what the layers are inside and how it all turned out, you may or may not be uh, causing yourself to end up seeing more imperfections inside of this transparent piece. So for me, I'm probably going to keep these uh, things doing this the sanding method that I was doing previously, and uh, you know have them have a cloudy transparent look rather than this super transparent look. Although for myself, for one that I don't sell, but one that I keep for myself for my own device, I may do some lots of passes of sanding and then wet sanding and then this gloss lacquer and try to make myself a, a very uh, transparent one just to keep for myself, we'll see. Um, but as far as the, the time it takes to process, um, if I can't dip it quickly and then get a result that I'm super happy with, it's probably not worth it. Um, however, if you are looking to make your resin prints look more transparent, this is definitely a thing you can try, um, and it definitely helps with that transparency. So, with that said, if you have any uh, suggestions or if you've played with transparent resins in the past and you have uh, other ideas of how to make things like this look very transparent once they're printed, um, definitely drop those in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions about this process or you'd like me to try something else, um, I can do that as well. I may, with this one that looks the best, uh, go ahead and after it's finished curing completely, I'll take the supports off of it. I may do some passes of wet sanding on top of this just to try to polish it even more and see if I can make it look even better than it does. So uh, if that turns out nicely, I'll either post another video here or maybe just uh, on Twitter, if you follow me there, you can you can see the results of what this thing turned out to look like with a little bit more uh, manual post-processing. So that's it for today. Uh, I had fun doing this experiment. Uh, it was a little bit messy and definitely made a bad smell here in my studio. So again, if you're going to try this, definitely work with these chemicals outdoors or in a well-ventilated -ventil area if you can. And that will do it for me today. for today. I will talk to you next time, and like I said, if you have any comments or suggestions, definitely leave them down below. Love to hear from you on that. And with that, I will see you next time.